Yeah. Hey. Okay. I have my internet just dropped. And here we are back again in the middle of a talk. My <laughs> internet just crashed, but you get a new part now. Hello, YouTube. Welcome to the new part. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's start the share share screen. Yeah, 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 it's going on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Our age's most egregious example of a mad's of a man's madness. Fifteen years ago, the people of Radicus decided that Vedwin, the living saint, was the literal incarnation of the god Eosas. Urgen winkled his pinched nose. He winkled it like so. <laughs> the supposed saint took it upon himself to liberate the Diabot, supposedly from allegiance to less worthy gods. But I've never known an army to conquer a land for its people's own good. The war lasted about a year. But you can guess what that year did to the worship of Eosas in the Diabot. Lord Redrick's four bears. He had four bears. Are these like little bears or are they bearing something? Yeah, no, his forebears are like people, his, um, you know, ancestors. Ah, okay, so Lord Redrick's ancestors had all been her sozinus, but after his father fell defending us from those fanatics, he personally saw that the temple of Eosas here in the town was shut down, so that's the place underground. He pounds at a f uh, points at a few ruined walls near the tree. Yeah, I was down there. I got killed. <laughs> In a different timeline, I got killed there. Okay. If you have any other questions, right. don't hesitate to ask. It's important right. that everyone get away on a sense of rules. Okay, this is outrageous. I came a long way. I'm not the kind of guy that is easily offended, so I just say goodbye. Because it just makes it easier for of us. Of course. He can't do anything. I can't do anything. Let's look at the tree. Scattered between the roots are bracelets of twine and bed, twilting flowers of notes of half erased. Blah blah. Okay, we already saw that. I can talk to her. But before I do that, yes. a thing I wanted to do since the last part, last time I opened this uh, character sheet, I <laughs> selected new spells. I want to talk to him. And Numeria reads Elif, and I read good old Border. So, Elif looks at you with quiet attentiveness. How may I be of service? Tell me about Adir. I've been gone for more than a year now, but I suspect I'll always think of the forest and fields of Adir as home. With thousands of years of history and traditions behind us, and there's a sense of dignity and responsibility that comes with that. He frowns, of course, there's baggage as well. Our imperial past is still fresh in the minds of many, as you may have noticed here. Has it been difficult to adjust to the dire wood? Eh, sorry. Nope. <laughs> People here are informal. Hot blooded. His mouth twists into a wry smirk. More attentive to insult than to duty. But as long as one avoids provocation, it's easy enough to get along. He steeples his fingers. I've gotten accustomed enough to keep keeping my thoughts to myself, anyway. How long were you in Galded Vale? Ooh. He shrugs, fidgeting with the hem of his sleeve. Not much longer than you. As you saw, I was hardly the haven that had been advertised. I think he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think some something is wrong with him. I, I mean, yeah. the, he basically oh, told okay. a guy to fuck his own daughter or sister or something like that. So, and then he acted like he never said it. So something is wrong with this guy. <laughs> Any yeah, thoughts on him. what I should do next? Well, you're in charge here. And as All right, as Nemeria, I'm, I'm in charge here. <laughs> Thanks that you say that. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make me read that whole thing so I would tell you you were in charge? Because that's weird. <laughs> no, it's just fitting, and I'm taking a chance. <laughs> uh. <laughs> okay, that's all. So, okay. 
Let's talk to do to that dwarf woman. You can read more. Yeah. Yeah. In the mail, you are happy in the mail. <coughs> okay. Caldara de Barazini. The squat, distended body of an elderly dwarf woman dangles from a thin, crooked brook that sacks at the tuck of her nose. The bloated purple flesh of her neck, worn away and patches like moth eaten lines, bulges over the ropes that suspends her, and her lifeless head lolls forward rigidly from one side to the other when the breeze shifts. You perceive a faint glow around her. Is that glow? It's not faint, that's pretty strong. Yes. That cast no light. call that faint. Yeah. A faint glow. <laughs> More like a sun. No, yeah, not sun. But that's a room like. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a tap that warms to her, and you feel somehow that you could reach out and touch it. Not with your hands, but with some aspect of yourself that has no worldly dimension. Reach out for the woman. You take a deep breath, clearing your mind, focusing on your objective. As you exhale, you feel yourself spreading out towards the hanging woman, perceiving all that lies between you and her with new, unfamiliar awareness. Once you have expanded enough to reach her, there is a sudden jolt of, uh, to your mind, a ringing electric surge of images, words and sounds. Involunt involuntarily, you shut your eyes and feel yourself being pulled down to some deeper consciousness in a space occupied only by you and the hanging woman. And when you open them again, she is staring at you with eyes clouded in a milky fog, her body still swaying in the wind. You no longer feel from a tree that stands planted in a misty void. The woman gives a slow nod of her head, the rope creaking as she does so. She smiles at you. Have you come here for me, She's dear, talking herself. Or have you gotten lost? Oh, okay. Ah, She's talking more, you I reading. think. Yes. Yes? <laughs> I'm only imagining this. I'm a dwarf. I'm not imagining things. I'm doing things. How are you able to speak to me? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Considering he has a rope around her neck. I need to understand something yeah. that's happened to me. I think I survived the bivouac. Do you know what that would be? And I want to know something about you. Okay. First off, I want to know how she, how she can speak to me. Is that what we're sure. doing? Yeah. Perhaps it just seems that way. Perhaps it is the easiest way for your mind to make sense of it. I think it is a very good choice. Okay. I think I survived the bivouac. Did you now, dear? My, that would be something, wouldn't it? Could be luck, could certainly be. A storm can be a careless thing. Or maybe it got its hands around your soul but couldn't pick it up. A soul can be heavy if it stayed in one piece through its time. Strong souls, we call them in the trade. Cold, I mean. Cold them. Those days are all behind me, no? Alright. But I still need to understand something that happened to me. She nods. A look of pity on her face, as though concealing a child. The world looks a little different than it used to, is that it? Feels like you're noticing things for the first time that have always been there? She nods. You have seen past the shroud. It only takes an instant. Your soul remembers, yes? Remembers how it sees when it leaves the body, like being reminded of a dream you had forgotten. She nods again. You are a watcher now. And the watcher you will stay. I'm a watcher! <laughs> so, I'm the Eye of the Beholder. I am the Iron Maiden. Oh, yeah, that sounds wrong. I'm not an Iron Maiden. <laughs> <laughs> Please forget that I said that. You said that. it now. Damn it. Okay, am I imagining this? No, still not. 
What's a watcher? Yeah, that's a question. What indeed? Long hours it's a good have question, many animals are spent studying such things. Not I, though. Not I. I'll tell you what I know, though, since fair is fair. And here we are, visiting you and I. And it reminds me of better times. Better times? You mean when you're not hanging down from a tree? <laughs> Souls pass on. Some say through Audra stones, which ah. are the bloodbones of the world. They leave the world for a time and are reborn into it. Sometimes more than they were before, but usually less and seldom the same. For all souls there is a time where they do not live, yet have not passed on. And those souls roam the world, same as you or I, either leaving or lost. But no one sees them because they have forgotten how. So when the beaver came up, um, we ran into a cavern just made out of Adra stones. So I guess that's why we have changed. Question is why am I the only mm. one? And then the other ones died. Including the guys that were um, starting the ritual. Yeah, because your soul's heavy. Their soul wasn't heavy. Yeah. So I'm fat, so that's like why I survived. <laughs> yeah. I think it's because you've never been reincarnated before. Yeah, let's see how it turns out. Because right now that will fit my dwarf. Because he's quite a steady type. Straight down to earth. Yeah. Not sinking too much. A watcher sees, though, knows what to look for. And sometimes they know a person just by looking at them. Know where they've been in ages past when their bodies were other bodies. See memories even their owner can't recall. Ah. Wonder to behold when all goes well. A wonder. So some of the guys that I've seen uh, when I touch them were dying or were in a place where they could easily die. So I guess those were reincarnations of the souls. Yeah. Interesting. <coughs> what do you mean when all goes well? No, first off I want to know... Okay. Oh, nothing to be afraid of, I'm sure. It's just much to take in for some. Sometimes there's trouble sleeping or other difficulties. She smiles at you reassuringly, fanning out a tuft of long whiskers that sprouts from one of her cheeks. You should see old okay. Meerwald. He could tell you much more than I. A watcher just like you. Helped many in his day. Took up in an old keep no one would claim. Not far, not far. Kadnua, beyond the Black Meadow. Oh, that's practically... He welcome the company. He will welcome the company. Okay, so first off, he's a he. Second off, they wrote he twice and big. And third off, um, Black Meadow. That's this where the uh, where the armor guy lost his trail. Mm. So I want to go there anyway. You say souls break apart over time. Oh yes. Entropy. Rima Gan's work. We know little of why or how. We lose pieces of ourselves when we die and pick up pieces of others when we are born again. But less than what we lost. We try to stop it with the animantic sciences, but with little success. No, no. Little success. You are hanging down from a tree talking to me. So... <laughs> That sounds pretty successful. <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's what she wanted, but still. Also, um, all these hollow souls now making sense because they were reborn without the pieces of their soul. Yeah. So I guess they tried to to focus uh, the pieces in one body. And I guess it happens to be my body now because I was, I was at the right place at the right time. And all those um, hollow burn 
are uh, part of the 